Hello, everyone, and welcome to the App Onboarding Webinar. My name is Dalton. I'm one of the app specialists here on the team of Subsplash, and I'm excited to get to introduce you to your dashboard today and show you how to use our tools to build a wonderful app for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to show you a few things that will be really helpful, though, um, before we dive into all the details. So first things are first, if you need help, should you need it, right here at the top of your screen, you'll be able to schedule a call with your coordinator here if you're just getting started with us. Or if you scroll down, we do have our need help section. I do recommend checking this out. There's two options here. Both are incredible. The first one I love a lot, it's called the Knowledge Center. You can click on the Knowledge Center and you can have this page open up and type in a question, maybe something to do with push notifications. And you will find an article that will teach you how notifications work, that sort of thing. You can do that with giving. You can do that with artwork. You name it, it's a really wonderful search engine for a platform. Um, the next best option I would say is contacting support. You can submit tickets here. You can schedule a call with one of our teammates. They can help you with our different products and, and, uh, work you through any questions that you may have. So definitely do that. Um, sweet. So now that we understand where to get resources, um, let's go ahead and just dive right in. So I'm going to give you a quick outline, uh, verbally here to explain how things are going to flow. First thing, um, first with the outline is, wanting to make sure that we understand how to see your app before it's live, all right? Very important component here. Yes, you can see your app before it's live, and that is done through what is called the church app. Uh, the church app, you can actually find it on the app store. If you don't have the church app, what I recommend that you do right now is in your dashboard, first, you can pause the video here in a second, uh, click on preview app, okay? And then following that, you'll see there's the church app. Here's what it looks like. You can click on that in the app store, download it, and then use your camera on your device to capture an image of this uh, QR code and it'll pull up your application right away. Uh, second option, if you have it pulled up on your phone, and in this case, I'll demonstrate here in a moment, is simply type in your app key that's displaying on your dashboard right into the church app itself, and it will look something sort of like this, all right? And then when you see your app in there, you give it a click and it'll open it up, and you'll probably have something uh, with a couple of images already in there, maybe some pre-made content already at your disposal to kind of start tinkering with. So. We'll come back to this shortly, but the church app is used to start monitoring all your changes as you're building your app. So that way you get a good idea of what it'll look like once it actually is its own distinguished app on the app store. Cool. All right. So now we understand how to get a quick view into our app and monitor our changes. So now comes the fun stuff. We're going to dive into our mobile app builder here in a moment. I want to teach you how to make some tabs. I want to show you how to get some content in those tabs, and then I'll explain a couple of, um, components here on the left hand side. Okay, we have different types of items we use to build out content within the app. And there's also some functions on the, the sidebar menu that I want to make sure we get introduced to before we head off today. So let's go ahead and dive right into the apps menu on the far left. All right, so in the apps menu, I'm going to go to the top it says mobile app. And then it'll display for me all of the tabs I currently have on my application. Okay. And so again, here's where we can see that try to get this within frame here. You kind of see it getting cropped towards the bottom, but you got the home icon, connect and audio Bible. All right. And so let's say we want to add in some other icons. We could do that. We can create all sorts of tabs for different sort of functions. And in order to do that, it's actually found up here in the top, right? You can click on manage tabs in the manage tabs section. You'll have an active tab bar at the top. This is for all of the tabs that are currently on the app. And then you have an inactive tab bar. This is where if you're working on something, you can simply drag it down. No one's going to see it now. All right, we'll put that back though. And then let's go ahead and create a brand new tab. I'll show you how to do that. On the far right hand side, click on create tab and you'll see a bunch of different icons or um, different tab options pop up. And so different tabs here have different functions like media, it's media specific, events, event specific. So as you add in content into those sidebar, menu options like media here on the far left or events, it's going to know to populate automatically into those fields. Same with events and blogs. You can plug in a, or plug in a blog feed, no um, problem. And then you have something called the build your own build your own is awesome because it can incorporate all of these other ones into it as individual items. So you could have a section for media in there. You could have a section for events. So it's sort of a catch all in that regard. So I like build your own a lot. So let's go ahead and use that as an example right now click through these pop-ups here and then I'll ask for a title. So in this case, I'm going to call this one media, or even perhaps I can make this specific to sermons. Okay. Let's do sermons. I'll scroll down, give it an icon here, click on next. It'll drop it into the inactive tab bar. I will plop it right up there. All right. Into the active tab bar it goes, hit save and we're all set. 
Quick side note, whatever tab is on the far left-hand side is a tab that's designated to open up very first in the app. So as you start building, kind of build with that home tab in mind. What do you want people to see right away? Make sure you get those sort of items there. All right, so as for getting items and content into your tabs, this is how we're gonna do it. There's a section here that says add item. When I click on add item, it will give me a quick um, pull out menu of everything I've already created inside of my dashboard. And I can also create from here too. So we have these different categories and I'll kind of jump into some of these categories as we go along the road here. All right, so let's say you find an item you wanna add into your app, you can sure do that. Maybe a prayer request form. All right, maybe Instagram. So let's say I wanna drop in a link to Instagram. I can click on that, click add item. There it is. I could even click and drag it around to change the order of that item. So let's see how this looks on the app. Let's save that. Let's get the screen pulled up and I'm gonna pull down the screen, refresh it. There's Instagram. And if I click on it, it'll take me right there. Cool. All right. Let's say we're not big fans of this artwork layout. See how we have these large scrolling images. You can change the design of your different tabs in your app quite simply from this mobile app menu on the far right hand side actually in the design section here. So let's say for example, maybe you wanna change that on sermons or perhaps home. You click on the design option. There's an option where you can disable a header or you can add in a static header. This is a good place for your ministry or church's um, logo for example. You can put it up there. And you can also change the item layout down below. So let's click on grid, for example, maybe add some margins to it. And let's see how we like that. Maybe we'll do square tiles. Cool. Hit save. All good. And let's see that screen. I'm going to refresh it real fast. There we are. Cool. We have Instagram giving and Facebook and they all changed quickly. Now for the fun component, I love this part. If you go into an item like Instagram, and you wanna change the way it looks, you can do that from this artwork menu here. All right, you have square, wide, and banner, and that design menu I just showed you plays with these, or it relates to these options here. So however you have your app design selected, you wanna make sure you change the artwork accordingly for that design. So in this case, we have square tiles, so I wanna update square tiles. So I wanna click on square. I can upload my own content to library. I have the dimensions listed here, which is really handy. Or I can use our stock images, of course. So let's do that. Let's do an open grave, hit apply, save, and let's see that screen again. Pull that down, refresh it. There it is, real quick, nice and simple. So let's get back here. So that's a little bit about design, um, adding different artwork images in. It's really, really simple and easy to do. Now on to some fun stuff over on the left-hand side. I should say more fun stuff because all this is really nice once you start getting everything integrated. It's quite nice. On the left-hand side there, media, events, and under library, we have a section for links. These are gonna be your top three um, items of choice in order to make content changes to your app. I would say generally speaking, what I mean by that is um, about a good, good, probably like three fourths of the design work you're gonna be doing is heavily related to those three types of items. And then the way you get those items organized into the app is through what is called a list. And you can think of it sort of as a folder like you would have on your desktop where you can put all sorts of items into a folder. So let's say for example, on my home tab, let's start with creating a, a folder um, using our list function here. Let's say we want one for like social media or something such as that. So let's do list and I already have one for social. Um, but let's create a new one. So I want to click on create list just so you can see. All right, social media. So I want to create this box you can think of or a folder. And in here, I can start adding some items to it. So what would fall in the category of social media would be something like Facebook, maybe Twitter, maybe my website by chance. So let's just do Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's good. Add those three in. We could even change the layout on those. Hit apply, hit save. All right, now if we go back to list, we just see it camping out there at the top, but it's not doing anything. It's not on our app yet. But in order to get it into our app, what we're gonna do is go back over here, go to apps, go to mobile app, and then we can find where we want it to live. So I think somewhere like connect would be a good place for social media. So people can connect with us through that means. All right, so let's do that. Click on add item, find that list we just made, and we'll select it. No problem there, save, all done. All right, so let's see those changes on our phone. I'm gonna click on connect. There it is at the top, social media. I can click on it, and there I have all of my different pages. 
So not too hard at all. Very simple to make edits and additions. I mean, I could click right into social media here and I can begin changing the order, changing the way it looks. Kind of, it's a sub menu again. A good way to think about it is just a menu inside of a menu. All right, so that is how the list functions work. And you can actually put lists inside of lists, different items inside of lists. You can really switch it up quite a bit. All right, let's work our way back over to media now. So what I'm gonna do next is hit media, events, and then link items and show you how to master those. So that way you can start getting good content into your app and it also correlates to your website too. All right, so what I'm gonna do is click on library after I selected media. This will show me my whole media library where I can go ahead and start creating collections of media. We call those media series. You probably have, or most people I've worked with are pretty familiar with um, sermon series, for example. They build out different sermons, maybe on a book of a, Bi uh, book of a Bible, or perhaps maybe like how-to videos on something, that sort of thing. So let's start with that. I can click on create media series, and let's title this John. Maybe we're gonna do this on uh, the book of John. And it will create for me this folder. I can change the artwork images here if I would like. Right now I'm just gonna click on publish, and then I'll go back to library, and we'll see it down below, right here, John. So let's go ahead and start getting some content into John though. So I think I probably have some videos I can use for that. What I'll do right now is click on this perforated area up the top. This will open up my finder. You may not be able to see this in the recording, um, but I will try to find a few videos I can upload, maybe two. I will make a side note. You do need at least five media files uploaded on to your app in order to pass a review. Or if you use our audio Bible function and you have that as a tab, you can find that in manage tabs where I showed you previously. That meets the requirement as well for um, passing the app review. All right, so I found an item. Let's click on sermons there. I'll upload it. And maybe I will also grab another one. Let's see if I can find one. There's one on notifications. Okay, just using random videos I have here on my, my desktop. So I can go into notifications or sermons, these videos, and I could change the names. Maybe how to... Let's think about this for a second. Let's let's stick with a John example. How about John chapter one? So we can pretend this is on John chapter one. I could put the title there, put a description. Um, our new sermon on John. Put in a date that was done. Let's say it happened on the 24th. You could also put in speakers or tags so people can get a good idea of um, kind of searching, having more of a refined search as they go through your media library on your website, for example. So I'll put in, I mean, be very, very appropriate. Let's use John in this case, John chapter one, verse one, all done. Okay, it's good there. Got some content that's being processed, perfect. I could even upload a document on like the sermon, maybe perhaps it's notes for PDF. I can upload that PDF on here and then we're all set. And then once I get all my metadata in here on the far right side, click on publish, we're all set. And I'll go back to library real fast. Um, Got to save, I'll always make sure to save. There we go. Go to library. And now I have it there, John chapter one, but it's not inside of the series yet. So in order to get it there, I can quickly click that checkbox or check mark and then do change series, select John and move it right in. Now if I go in there, there it is. All right, sweet. So let's get this to show up on the app now. What I'll do is go back to apps, go to the mobile app menu, and then there's my sermon tab. That's where I want it to live. I can click on sermons, click on add item, and then there it is under series, John. I'll drop that guy right in and hit save. Okay, so no troubles, super simple. And now what we can do is take a look at this in the app. So we see that media tab there at the bottom. I can click on it. And I apologize, it's being cropped. It's just uh, the way I have this screen recording rendered. But we'll refresh this area. Let me actually make sure this is published though. I'll just save that, okay. This is a good example here. Sometimes you've got to refresh the app in order to have it show up. Sorry, I missed that. But what I did was I just force quit it. Sometimes after you make changes, you wanna force quit and then go back in. And there it is. Okay, there's John at the top. John chapter one, and there it is. And I could begin playing it now if I wanted to. It may not play yet, I'm not sure if the video is done processing, but you get the idea, and there it is, it's playing. Great.
Super easy. All right, let's work our way back over to this media menu. I do want to show you a really cool feature. I love this. So on the far left hand side, it says embeds. If I click on embeds, I have this whole library of different embeds I can create to plug in um, content that's coming from my app dashboard into my website. So in other words, if you have events happening in your app, perhaps you have video content in your app and you want that to streamline to your website, you can do that through embeds. This is your solution for that. So let's say media library, I'll click on preview embed, and then I'm gonna filter for that sermons or um, that media tab I created. So on the far right, it says media series or list, content source, I'll be able to find that list in here, click on sermons, apply, and then it gives me a quick preview of what that looks like. And I can scroll down and copy that code and then put it into my website. So whether you're using a website with us, which I highly recommend, or using um, one of our competing or competitors website builders, you can still use embeds. It's a really good thing to know. So make those integrations, super simple. Find that code block function on the website, copy and paste it right in, and you're all set. Now all you need to do is just manage your library and upload it right into your app, and you are fine. So a good example of this, done very well. Here's Sage Hills Church and their website. On the far right, it says watch, then sermons, and then here's their whole sermon archive pulling from the watch list on their mobile app. I can see in here all of their sermons. Here's one they're currently doing on from the ashes, and they have all of their media items they built out. So this is an example of sort of what we have done already. All right, and you can see in here they got notes they've added. So you can start doing some fill-in-the-blank notes as well, plugging that in into that one media item, making it really robust and simple to use. So this also applies to, to events, like I said. So if you click on events here, we can see there are a couple of events happening at Sage Hill soon, and I can check out those events here. I can share them. I can add them to my calendar nice and simply. Awesome. So let's go back into the app dashboard and talk a little bit about events and then link items next. So events are very easy to use. Kind of similar to media series, you'll notice at the top you have an area for individual events and then you'll have different calendars below. So think series and then media items. All right, so similar to media, what we're gonna do is click into the option or the folder, in this case a church calendar that we wanna make changes to. And you can, from this menu, you can hit that create button and you can create an event within a specific calendar. Now, if you want, you can also create from here, click on create event, Give it a title, maybe you can call this a potluck. Select a calendar, hit church calendar, hit create, and it'll drop it right into there. And then we can select the date that it's gonna be happening on. So maybe we have it for uh, this Sunday, perhaps next Sunday, and then you can set, uh, make it repeating. You can also put an address on that if you'd like. Find that there, put a description, some other details, click publish, and you're all set. Last step is let's make sure it's gonna show up in the app. So after creating that event, I'm gonna go back to mobile app and let's give it a home inside of the home tab. We're gonna click on add item, find the calendar we wanna to add to the home tab. There it is, church calendar, add item, save, and we're good. So next, let's go into the app. Let's get out of this menu here, click on home, refresh it, there it is, church calendar. Click right in, there's potluck and we are looking good. So that is perfect. We can go ahead and click on potluck. I can check out those event details. I can send it to a friend. It's a really nice feature to use, that's events. All right, and you can find your event embed under the embed section in events, scroll down, here it is. And there it is, church calendar. That already selected for us. We can click on copy, add that right into our website and we're all good to go. Cool. So one of my last and favorite features is gonna be the library option here. You'll click in and you'll find links. Links are great for creating all sorts of content pages within your app. Whether you're linking in a website or taking someone to a website, you can do that with links. So in the top right, click on create link and we can give this one a name like, um, how about connect card? Let's do that, connect card. So let's say you want a connect card front and center on your app. So anybody new to your church, your ministry, to your page, they can get their information your way really easily. So we'll call it connect card. And then down below we have what are called link types. Link types help this item know how to function. So if I have a website I'm wanting to link to, I would click on website and then drop in the URL. If I have a page for giving or making donations or purchases, I would select that and then put the URL there. 
And what we're doing is we're establishing inside the app an icon with a name, and then it's connected, kind of hyperlinked uh, is a good way to think about it. So it's hyperlinked, you click on it, and it will take you right to the page you need to go to. All right, so let's do one called page here, and it's gonna to link to a custom page created with Snap Pages. So that Snap Pages is a part of the Subsplash platform, a part of your package. You can click on that, and then you can click on page there. So in this field, you'll notice all of the different pages you've already created with Snap Pages will pop up for you to quickly grab and add into the app really seamlessly. So I'll click on Connect Card here, then it will display for me that card that's already inside my website. Hit apply, scroll up and save. And then the last step is making sure this gets established onto the home tab. So let's go back to apps and then mobile app. And then here it is, add item, it's a link item. And then there's connect card, drop it right in, save. Following that, let's go ahead and take a peek on our app here. Scroll down and there's connect card right there. So we have that connect card in here and you wouldn't even be able to tell this is coming from a website. There's no header, there's no footer. We have a system set up in such a way that it removes those items um, at the top and bottom. So it really makes this nice flowing, cohesive feel to the app where you don't really feel like you're on a website at all. So what's nice about Snap Pages, which I recommend checking out, if you have an app package with us, you also um, have a website feature available and that's on the far left-hand side here. So even if you're not using Snap Pages as your own website builder, which again, I do recommend save your money. If you're all in one with us, this is a really good option. Click on web here and then website. And this is where you can jump in to start building out your web pages. And again, any web pages you build on your website here, you can integrate into your app. And as I was saying just a moment ago, even if you're using something like WordPress or another competing website, you can still use snap pages to build out awesome pages and link them right into your app. The advantage to using snap pages, is, well, this is one of the advantages, is any time you are adding new pages into both uh, the app and website that are linked together, the good news is if you change something on your website, it will change in the app. You're doing two things at once, just like you would be with embeds. Anytime you add media or events, those will go right into your web page really simply. Awesome. Let's work our way back out here, back to our main portion of the dashboard. All right, so we've covered a lot of really important details. We understand how to do media, we understand how to do events, links, lists, and how to do some tab design. This is all perfect, okay? All wonderful tools that you gotta get integrated in, and they're fun, it's really rewarding. So another set of tools that are really important to check out, and I will recommend that you, on your own time, start experimenting with these. Underneath apps, you'll find a section here for push notifications. In this field, you can create different notification groups that people or users can subscribe to on your application. And then you can go ahead and create a notification in the top right. Maybe you can say, hey, watch our latest sermon. From there, what you can do is find that sermon you've uploaded, like click on attachment, for example, and then you'll find the media item for that. There's John chapter one, apply it. And then you can select the notification group, which right now we only have one called general, but I can send it right here and there, or I could schedule it to be sent at a certain time so my users can receive it. Just in case they miss that sermon, they can watch it on Monday, let's say. Awesome, so that's a little bit about push notifications. And again, with the attachment area down here, the way this really works is it, it's pulling from any item you've already created within Subsplash within your app dashboard. So add the item you want to send to people and then you can push it out. Great, let's uh, go ahead and exit out of this menu and we'll go down here to library. And under library, there's two fields here. You got RSS feeds. So if you're using a blog feed, this is a really good way to get your blog to come into the app and have it be um, interfaced really nicely. Click on create RSS item in the top right. And then right here is the RSS feed URL. If you have a blog, there should be a share setting area where you can find an RSS feed, which is basically a simple URL that pumps in the data from your blog into the app. And so once you link that, you're all set. Title it blog, hit save, add it into the tab you want, and then it will live there. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about is fill-in notes. So let's check out fill-in notes real quick. And in fill-in notes here, what you want to do is you'll add in your login details, okay, so that you're already using with Subsplash. So let's see here. I may have access to it. Let's check it out. There we go. I got a bunch of different apps I'm a part of, but in fill-in notes, what I can do is let's say I go into um, create a new page. 
I could do that. Let me find real quick a good place to build a page. Awesome. So let's go here. Great. So now we're on the webinar app page. I'll go to pages. And then let's go ahead and create a quick fill and note page. This is a really awesome tool, really powerful, because you can get your sermon notes to load into your app. And then that way people can follow along with your, your sermon um, while they're in service. Really great interactive tool. You can think about this, cutting down bulletin costs. You can use fill and notes for that. So let's click on create page. I can title it um, sermon notes. And then we could do something like Jesus is Lord. And let's say I want to make this the title. You can do that, make it a heading. And let's hit return. And let's do something like John chapter, and then we'll call it one. But then let's make this a fill in. So if I want to make this interactive, I can have that highlighted. And then people have to guess what that particular item is. And I'll demonstrate this and demonstrate it here in a second inside the app. Um, you can also add a free form note area as well. And you can add in some images if you want and get really robust with how you deliver your notes into the app. But to keep it short, let's go ahead and click on publish for now. And then let's work our way back to our app section here. So you won't have this many apps displaying on your dashboard, but rather just your own. So let's uh, find webinar app and then here's this link. You're gonna find your own link under the latest published URL section. Copy your link, go back into your subsplash dashboard. All right, once we're back into our dashboard, let's go ahead and create a link item for our notes page. We're gonna do that by clicking on library, clicking on links and then selecting create link in the top right. We can title our item notes and then select this app link item right here, this app link type. This will allow our content to show right into the app and not take the user outside of the app to view the page. Underneath URL, we'll paste in our link, click on save. And then the last step is getting this item to show up in our home tab. We're gonna do that by going to apps and then mobile app as we've done before with other items and then click on add link or add item and then select the link option. There's notes, add it right in, save it. Now you're all set to view your notes inside your app. So let's do that. Refresh this screen here, click on notes, and here we are. Our notes page, we'll scroll down. John chapter, and I can fill in the blank. Let's say it's two, and it's gonna shake and say, nope, you're wrong. Oh, it looks like it was chapter one, right? And so then I can also put in notes here. And then once I'm done, I can hit email, and then this will create a PDF for me, send it right to my email address, and I can keep it later for myself. The nice thing about this page here that you're seeing for notes is that that link that we created, that we populated into notes here, this is actually a, a latest published URL link. I think I may have mentioned that before, but what that means really is anytime you create a new page and schedule it to publish or publish it then and there, it refreshes right onto your app automatically. You don't need to worry about putting this link in again. You're all set. Sweet. So let's go ahead and go back to our main menu here and we'll end our time for our, our, our time for today right now. So I wanna thank you all for watching the webinar, getting introduced to some of these tools, everything from app tab design to fill in notes and everything in between. We got media, events, links, all of these fun tools that are made available to you right now in your dashboard. Start using them if you haven't done so already and start experimenting. I like to tell this to a lot of my clients I work with too. Inside of the church app, try to find some app examples in there that you really like and then try to emulate what they're doing through the tools that have made, uh, have been made available to you through the dashboard here today. As you've seen them, start applying the concepts and you'll really start learning and growing that way and get a really awesome app built out by the end of it all. So if you have questions moving forward, let your coordinator know by going to the top here, schedule a call or scroll down and let our support team know that you have questions and we'd love to help you. Happy app building. I hope you all take care and thank you for watching the webinar today. Bye-bye.